Hi everybody and welcome back to Mama G's Pantry. I was in a bit of a hiatus over the summer because it was nice out and I was gardening. Plus we had our first grandchild on June 29th, Mason Bernard Brooks. So needless to say we've been spending oh two or three days a week over there. Just brought us so much joy. Anyway, now that it's December and Christmas is rolling around, well, what's December without Christmas treats? So I'm today going to make one of my childhood favorites. We called it sponge toffee. Some people call it honeycomb. Um, you might know it as what's inside a crunchy bar covered with milk chocolate. It's that crispy, sugary, melt in your mouth, well, I call it honeycomb. It's very simple, only four ingredients one and a half cups of sugar. Now we're gonna mix all this into a large pot. It doesn't look like a lot of ingredients, but it will foam up at the end. So one and a half cups of granulated sugar. To that I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of water just to help it all melt down. And over here I have two tablespoons of white corn syrup. All goes in there. And in this one, two tablespoons of honey, because it is called honeycomb. Some recipes don't even ask for honey, but I just thought that was wrong, so I do half corn syrup, half honey. All right, now the only other ingredient we have here is baking soda. One tablespoon, and I sifted it into this little bowl because it goes in at the very end and it can't have any lumps. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this on a hot stove I, you can see I've got my candy thermometer already in there because this is going to get hot fast and I want it to get to 300 degrees. So now I'm going to take it over to the stove, melt it all up. All right, we've got everything in our pot here. I've got it on quite high heat and you only stir it, stir it until you can tell that all the sugar is melted. Okay almost there it's gonna start boiling here soon so just want to make sure all the sugar is melted everything's in there together which we're almost there now once that happens and it starts boiling no more stirring Turn that down a bit. no more stirring if you do anything you swirl it okay and then we're gonna we want to cook this to 300 degrees now you can use a regular candy thermometer, which I would stick in there now, okay? Or I'm going to use my Groovy Infrared Instant Root Thermometer. Now keep an eye on it, because this can burn really quickly. You don't want it on high, 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 or you'll burn it, but you can see it's starting to turn color. And we're going to get this a really nice golden amber color. You can see it turning already. So with my thermometer, it's already at 215 degrees. Like I say, just swirling, swirling, swirling. This is the basis to so many treats. But once you get that sugar going, you don't want to stir it or it'll stop. It'll make it crystallize again, which we don't want it to do. And the other thing you must remember about this is that there is nothing hotter in the world than hot sugar. Last week I burnt my finger making caramel and it still hurts. So be very, very, very careful. You don't want to get this on any part of you. Not only that, it'll just keep burning. Gosh, I remember when we were young and we burnt ourselves, my mom used to put butter on it. I have since learned that is absolutely the worst thing you can do. It drives the burn even deeper into your skin. Let's do another quick check here. I love this thermometer. Yeah, this is gonna be a few minutes. It's at 225 now. So just be patient. Just say keep swirling it. Alright. So this is about the gold amber color that you want your melted sugar and corn syrup and everything. Now here comes the fun part. Remember to sift this, because you don't want any lumps in it. Put it all in there, and then stir it up. Do this quite quickly. Trying to make sure there's no 
clumps of baking soda lying around. Okay, that's it. Pour it as quickly as you can into your pan with parchment paper. Maybe a bit of Pam on it. Okay. Now, very important here, you don't want to touch it, basically. You don't want to smooth it out. You don't want to put anything in it. And by the way, you're going to be terribly frightened at the state of your pot, because this will harden very quickly. But if you put it in really hot water with soap, it'll come out. Now, just to show you that, you know, when you want to cook, you have to take your failures. So these were a couple of honeycombs I made earlier. This one I put in too, too big a pan for the recipe, and it wasn't quite done enough. And this one, well, I overdid it. And so now it tastes like burnt honeycomb. But look at this one. Don't touch it. Leave it for at least an hour, probably two, and then you should be able to flip it out, break it up with your hands. I like to finish it, dip it in chocolate. It's like making your own crunchy bar. You can use dark chocolate. Anyway, if you keep it um, in an airtight container, it'll keep for weeks. Don't put it in the fridge. It'll fall apart. Okay, there you go. Honeycomb. Third time lucky.